I'm Tony Preckwinkle, chair of the Cook County Democratic Party. And I'd like to welcome you to The 80, our podcast about the party, its leaders, and its candidates. We're beginning the podcast by interviewing our elected Democratic committee people to discuss their backgrounds and thoughts about the history and future of our party. Today, I'm excited to welcome Barrett Peterson from Leiden Township. Welcome, Barrett. Thank you, Tony Preckwinkle. <laughs> All right, and we're going to start with sort of how you got into politics. What's the story? Oh, it's a long 45-minute story, so I'll give you the 35-minute version. There you go. My, my father worked on the railroad with a guy named Gus Strom. He moved up to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We used to visit him. My father and he did not fish, but his son did, and he taught me how to fish. We walked into the Escanaba River with our fishing reels. It was clean. It was clear. We drank the water right out of the stream and caught brook trout. I came back to Franklin Park, brought my fishing rod a couple blocks east of the Des Plaines River and found a polluted river. And as a kid, I really didn't understand why was that river up there so clean and this one was so dirty. And so I started asking questions and I, at that time I became involved in scouts. We used to do cleanups along the river. There'd be tires and Fresh. shopping carts and everything else. And, uh, and then my mom brought home a book from a garage sale when I was about 13 called Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. And there were a lot of complex chemical terms in there, but I got the gist of it. And that was that DDT and other chemicals were having a deleterious effect on our environment. And I became interested in uh, the environment. I got out of the Air Force, used the GI Bill to start pursuing a biology and chemistry degree, and then ran into an influential political science professor who said, you know, you can do more for the environment than government law and politics. So he convinced me to move back to Franklin Park, go to law school and run for public office. And who was that? Um, well, that was uh, Don Meldon, uh, was down at Palm Beach Junior College. He was a very highly paid university professor up in the Northeast, retired and part-time worked at Palm Beach Junior College. And I was going to school with a bunch of Floridians that were less interested in politics than a Chicagoan. <laughs> In, he became interested in me and uh, mentored me. Oh, that's a great story. Thank so you. So you came to politics through your interest in, 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 in the environment. Yes. And then a transition, of course, to social justice, livable wage, breathable air, you know, drinkable water, secure pensions, et cetera. All those things. All right. Yeah. Now, all right. You hold, you hold several offices. Share that with us. Uh, I'm the mayor of Franklin Park, uh, and I'm obviously the Democratic Committee of Leiden Township. Um, I sit on the Cook County Zoning Board of Appeals, um, and uh, I am very involved in the Des Plaines River Improvement Project. All right, so carry over from your from your days as a as a you still fish. I started to say as a fisherman. Yes, I do, but uh, not as much. I golf more often. <laughs> you golf, okay. All right. So tell us about being mayor of Franklin Park. Oh, it's a. Uh, one of the most exciting jobs that anybody could ever have. Every day is different. You know, one day you'll be out in Washington, D.C. meeting with Senator Durbin, and the next day you'll be taking a phone call from someone who says that they want me to do something about the neighbor's tree because they have flowers that drop on their pavement, and when the car runs over them, they turn purple. So you're talking to the <laughs> number two U.S. senator in the, in the world to dealing with flowers dropping on pavement. But really, getting things done is exciting. Infrastructure improvements, and that's why I'm really hoping that uh, our federal government does an infrastructure plan, uh, water mains, sewers, streets, um, and really trying to get people excited about recycling for a number of reasons. One is the bottom line, it costs them less if they recycle because it costs less to have recycling removed. But imagine all of pollution of these trucks driving 100 miles away to dump our garbage. And so I try to tell them, you know, recycle, recycle, recycle. I'm wearing a vest that is made out of recycled pop bottles. Many of us wear fleece and these products are very usable. And the more we can get people to do that, the more sustainable we become. So wait a minute, we make fleece out of uh, recycled pop bottles? You make pants, yeah. All, all sorts of things are made out of recycled pop bottles. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I didn't yeah. realize that. So now Franklin Park is a community, as I recall, uh, with lots of, uh, lots of industry. And, and, and much of it is modernized, become much cleaner and much more efficient. 
and it is uh, employing a large number of people. We're actually manufacturing more products now than we did 30 years ago. A lot of people say, oh, <laughs> manufacturing is moving out. You walk, you drive by these parking lots that are only 40% full. It's not because they're not doing well, it's because they automated and they're producing more products with less people because of automation, efficiency, computers, et cetera. Manufacturing continues to be a, an important part of our economy. And your point is that as we look at it, we should be um, cognizant of the efficiencies that have uh, transpired over time. Sometimes we think it's all um, jobs moving to the Southern part of the United States or offshore, but in fact, uh, it's, it's greater efficiency in manufacturing operations. And actually the challenge, Tony, is getting people interested in manufacturing. One of the biggest complaints from our manufacturers is they can't get people to take jobs that start at $47,000 out of high school and $74,000 with overtime. And when kids are growing up, parents don't say, uh, gee, I think you should go into manufacturing. They say, oh, you should become a lawyer or a doctor or, or a, uh, a, da a data programmer or something like that. Few people think about having their kids go into manufacturing. And that's why Triton College and our local manufacturer do this gadget girls thing uh, for two weeks every year in the summer. And they get um, about young women. 15 to 20 children, uh, uh, women, young girls uh, involved in manufacturing to get them excited about that. So it's a, it's a, a, a STEM program. It's a science, technology, engineering, mathematics, whatever, encourage young people to go into it. Yeah. Now, very exciting. You're right. I think a lot of people think of manufacturing as, you know, sort of dirty and requiring strength. But manufacturing these days is a lot of computer work um, mm -hmm. and a lot of math. And it's not so much brute force and it's not um, dirty, difficult environments. No, you still use your hands for setup. But a lot of it is mathematical computation, slide rule, uh, computers. Um, not a lot of it, not not all of it but that's the way it's trending. So it's still possible for people to go into manufacturing without a four-year degree and, uh, and have a, well. live a, uh, earn a very livable wage and get health benefits. Yeah, and support their families. Yeah. Good point, good point. Yeah. Now, so you're, in addition to being mayor, you're the Democratic Committee person for Leiden Township. Tell us where Leiden Township is. Of course, Franklin Park is in it, what else? Oh, the easiest thing to remember about Leiden Township is we are the Southeast corner of O'Hare Airport. Chicago is on our Eastern border. And Chicago is on our northwestern border with O'Hare. Uh, directly north of us is Schiller Park. And then directly north of that is Rosemont. As you probably know, Rosemont has all these theaters, convention centers, hotels, et cetera. In fact, I got my start as a bellman at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare, which, uh, which is a Pritzker ownership. And um, the chief of police there is the one who asked me what my major was at the time, and I said biology and chemistry, or I, I said I'm a political science major at that time because I had uh, moved over to Elmer's College and was an urban studies major. He said, what are you going to do with that? I said, well, I'm going to run for public office. And he said, he said, well, what political organization are you part of? And I said, well, I'm, Demo I'm a Democrat. And he says, I didn't ask you whether you're a Democrat or Republican. He says, I asked you what political organization you're part of. And I said, I'm not. He said, well, then you're not running for public office. He said, go over and see my friend, James C. Curry, who was a reclamation district commissioner at the time and a committeeman. And I went over there and volunteered to be a committeeman and that's how it ended up. So we've got Schiller Park, Elmwood Park, the mayor of Elmwood Park uh, is Skip Saviano. He and I went to Holy Cross together. Uh, and then we've got Dave Guerin in, in River Grove. Uh, Jeff Sherwin is a longtime mayor in North Lake, Nick Kayafa in uh, Schiller Park, and of course, Brad Stevens in Rosemont. We really are a very tight knit area and none of us have been investigated or indicted. I think we're one of the cleanest <laughs> townships in the area. Good news, good news. I, I, I've been asking every uh, committee person what they hope from, from the Biden-Harris administration. What, what do you see ahead for us? Oh, I'm expecting tons of things. And look at how many fronts they're working on, Tony. I mean, they've got the pandemic, they've got institutional racism, uh, they've got a, a faltering economy. They've got a polarized nation. Um, and I highly recommend people watch The Social Dilemma because it'll understand how people are being put into these rabbit holes and uh, we are polarizing each other. Uh, the but, Social but Dilemma, tell us, it's yeah. a movie. The Social yeah. Dilemma. Social Dilemma, it's a documentary, a documentary on Netflix. 
highly recommend it. It'll show you how people are steered into these rabbit holes and how the people that differ from us aren't bad. They're just getting their news from a different source. So we're not even looking at the same facts that we were back when we were watching uh, news 30 years ago. Everybody was dealing with the same set of facts. But back to Biden. So I'm hoping to get an infrastructure bill. I'm optimistic that Republicans and Democrats will want to work on that. Um, I'm hoping that we get the vaccinations out soon. Um, I'm hoping that we can um, work to create a more uh, open dialogue on things without all the anger, less polarization. But institutional racism is something I see and hear every day. And um, I'm optimistic that we're going to make progress. I'm not so optimistic that it's going to be completed in the short term. It's it's a it's been an endemic problem in our country from the very beginning. So it's unlikely. That's why I'm, that's why I'm hoping you ask me who my favorite uh, politician or statesman or public elect, publicly elected official of all time is. All right, I'll ask you. Okay, it's without a question, LBJ had and a why? controversial Vietnam record. He got Southern segregationists to vote for the 1964 Civil Rights Act. He got Southern segregationists to vote for the 1965 Civil Rights Act. He created more programs for the poor and the middle class than almost any other president. And he's forgotten because of the Vietnam War. He was so instrumental in setting up the legislation. If we had a Supreme Court that valued voting rights, the Voting Rights Act and all of the amendments that have occurred since then would be more than sufficient to keep these different laws that uh, these states are passing to discourage people from voting or to reduce the number of people that are voting. LBJ, without a doubt. Have you been reading, have you read Robert Caro's uh, series, on, uh, uh, volumes on, on, uh, on LBJ? Some of them, but not all of them. Right, me too, me too. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. one, the first one, and I can't remember the name of it. The first one talks about him as a young teacher in, in Southern Texas and uh, saying when he, and he was in his 20s and saying to his students who were misbehaving, you know, basically you're misbehaving in the class of somebody who's going to be president of the United States one day. <laughs> yeah. I he love was that. Such, he, was, he knew the legislative process and knew how to get b bills passed and get people to vote for it, even though those people were adamantly opposed to what they were voting for. That, to me, is legislative skill. That's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. impressive. Well, anything you want to leave us with, uh, especially oh. maybe to the young Democrats who are, who are watching? Oh, sure. Um, uh, one of the other things that we should talk about is how to get younger people involved. And I, I, I am not one of those persons that excels at it, but I have staff that, that are. One of the things that we've done is we've started getting people in their 20s to run for local boards like library or appoint them to zoning or plan commission, et cetera. It gets them involved and they uh, seem to be excited and that excitement roils over. And then the other part of it is if you can get countywide or statewide candidates into your district, the thrill that people have meeting them. I mean, Tony, when you come and people see you, they go, wow, hey, I remember you at Tony Preckrieco. That was pretty neat. <laughs> and or Dick Durbin, he'll come and walk a parade or Mike Quigley or even a judge. Oh, really? This is a judge? This is, yeah, this is a judge. And they get thrilled by that and they're energized and then they talk to their friends. Um, but running for public office, I think is important, especially in the township. So one of the things that's different about being a suburban committeeman is that we don't have those lightning rod issues that are common throughout a ward, like you would in the city of Chicago. Um, you know, I mean, everybody's talking about CPS. Schools aren't really an issue here. And if, it, if it's an issue in River Grove, it's really not an issue in Elmwood Park or North Lake or, or Schiller Park. Um, so those types of lightning rod issues aren't there. It's hard to get people motivated about a local issue. Um, so what you try to do is get candidates out to meet them. And then it's, it's hard, but convincing them why it's important to vote in a Democratic primary if you live in Cook County, because that's where we pick our leaders. And if you want a good leader, you have to vote in the Democratic primary. There you go. Now, um, I think a, a, a person from your township, Era Sepulveda, is that right? Uh, was just recently elected to the Metropolitan yeah. Water Reclamation District, a young woman. Ida. Yeah, Ida. it's actually, actually Bobby 
is the one who's from our township. Bobby is from, and that's something else we didn't talk about. Franklin Park is about 50% Latino. Most of those Latinos have been here for 50 years. So it's not like they're transient. And most of them come from a little area in Durango called Tepoanis. And the towns are La Polisima, Royal Chico, Rincon, Los Pinos, San Jose de la Boca. Um, and, and, and they stay tightly knit. And Ida is a benefit of that tight knit Latino community that's been here for 50 years. Um, I'm very proud of our Latino community and we've appointed many of them to boards and hired them. Uh, my secretary is from Guadalajara. Um, it's very exciting, Tony, very exciting. All right, so, so your part of the county is one where there has been a longstanding Latinx population and a growing Latinx population. Yeah, it's uh, marginally growing. It's pretty stable. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, di I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Listen, I'm very grateful that you were able to join us. Uh, what I, I asked you before, but I'll ask the second time. Uh, is there anything else you want to share with us that we didn't, that I didn't ask? Um, I'm an urban planner from Elmer's College, and I really enjoy making government work. Uh, it's exciting to see uh, not only uh, policy initiatives that sort of come in from 10,000 feet down to the ground, where you actually get to implement them and see uh, people's lives enhanced, um, their lives made better uh, by walking trails, biking trails, uh, better lighting, better snow removal. Uh, I think local government's exciting, and I want to thank you for the opportunity, Tony. All right. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining us. Barrett Peterson, who's mayor of Franklin Park and committee person for Leiden Township. Thank you, Barrett. Thank you.